Okay. So this is it right here, guys. This is the final rifle we're going to be showing you guys. This is the FX Impact Mark III, or known as the M3 by FX Air Guns. This rifle right here, guys, is by far uh, one of my personal favorite tools that I like to use doing iguana removal. I can do so much with this, save a lot of time, and be super accurate, efficient. And I'm just confident if I pull up to a job and there's a huge infestation, this magazine is holding 28 rounds, guys. 28 rounds. Everything is bolt action. But the, the, the benefit of that, guys, is it's really, really accurate. We are actually going to be cleaning out the inventory. We got the bath star right here. We got the rag. And we're going to make these babies look nice and shiny. Yep, yeah, today's that day. Uh, it's about to rain in about two hours. It's really cloudy out here. We don't have no iguana removal scheduled. So I figured, hey, it'd be a right perfect time to come back to the base camp and, you know, tidy up some of these rifles. As you guys know, we put a lot of serious work with these tools in the field doing our job. And it do get some time where, you know, sometimes things get a little dirty, a little rusty, a little scratched up. So right now is the time for us to, you know, check out everything, clean it up, and uh, also make sure that they're zeroed. You know, we do got a small little range right down there. So it's just a good, you know, a good time to do all that. And then also uh, we get to show you guys because we, we read the comments. A lot of you guys want to know, like, what kind of air rifles do you guys use typically? So hopefully today we'll be able to answer some of those questions. Right, Manny? Oh, yeah. All right. You want to start off and show them uh, one of the, the first kind of ones that we do use, man? The most popular that we use, I would say I have to go with the Panthera. Oh. This beautiful tool comes in super handy, really packs a punch. So this is the close range monster. You guys see me take a lot of iguanas out with this. Basically it's an FX Panthera. It is the compact hunter edition that do got the folding stock. As you can see. Also, it's got the short little bottle and it's got this fat boy uh, by Donnie FL. This is a moderator, AKA a silencer. And then uh, for the close range to be able to get those targets, we do got the hollow sun right there, which is really nice. And it is uh, solar powered as well. So what's the benefit, Manny, of having a solar power scope and a battery operated scope? It never runs out during the day. You have charging all day. You can use it whenever you want, you know? Just gotta have sunlight, to be able to get that energy. But um, real quick, turn it on, Manny. The all scope, yeah, turn the scope on. It's a little button on the side. One of those, you see it? Are you turning yeah, it on? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay, did you? Okay. We're just showing what it looks like in there. If you want, just go down the aim down the range real quick. I'm gonna come behind you. So I just want to give everybody a POV of what the the dot looks like. Yep, that's fine. Just hold it steady. So that's the red dot. Right there. We don't have no magnifiers on it or anything like that. Um, so it's just pretty simple. Manny, we do have a uh target set up down the range. If you want, uh would you mind confirming the zero on it? Oh, I would love to. I think that's pretty accurate, dude. Holy smokes. <laughs> yeah. That was that was pretty accurate. All right, let's get one of those metal targets, if you don't mind. Oh, I missed that one. Okay. Nice. I'm going to confirm it as well. Oh, we'll switch. I'll have you hold this. Like I said, guys, this one right here was sponsored to me by FX Air Guns. Um, it is a great tool for what we do and also, you know, any other small range, small game hunting. But uh, what I like about this, though, is, you know, nice magazine, holds 18, uh, 22 caliber, and it's got a lot of punch to it as well. So it's like, you get a nice close range shot, um, you know, it, it, pretty good at putting them down. Also, it's good for shooting in the trees and it's also good for shooting, like I said, really close range. Because remember, 
These iguanas are right next to the water, so I'm trying to neutralize them before they get a chance to escape and swim off. Uh, let me see if I can. Uh, I'm just going for one of those steel targets right there. Yeah, she's on. She's on. So to answer one of your questions, guys, first first rifle that we are showing you guys off is the FX Panther. We're not going to show you guys these rifles in any specific order on like which we think are our favorite. But maybe at the end, we might give you guys some insight. So that's the first rifle right there. We'll put that down. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to, like I said, we're going to be cleaning and uh, oiling all these rifles down and uh, keeping them on standby for our next job. Okay, guys, next in the arsenal that we usually have on us is a group of air guns brought to you guys by Benjamin Air Guns. These are the Marauders. That is what they are called, and these are not just any old Marauders. Right here is the semi-automatic version of that. Now, as you guys know, semi-automatic is pretty nice compared to single loading, but there are pros and cons to that many. What do you think some are the, the benefits of semi-automatic is? You can definitely keep your eye on the target, so you know, as fast as your finger could pull, as fast as it will go. That's what I'm, you know. Okay, and what, are, what do you think some of the cons are? Probably run through ammo pretty fast, honestly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's yep, ammo. Uh also they're not as accurate as a bolt action rifle. Really? Yeah, they're not as accurate. So you have a better, you know, you have more chances of more like, you know, off shots. Um, you know, you have more chances of, you know, misfires, you have more chances of you know, you can be aiming right. You know, you, you, your point of impact could change cause the semi-automatic. And depending on how fast you're, you're pulling that trigger and letting that regulator reset. These air rifles, guys, run on re regulators. So there is no recoil with these rifles. But like I said, if you're just going to be pulling, pulling, pulling for a big target, it would be good. But for something small, you know, you might you might do good on it. But like I said, there you could have a, a couple flyers, a couple flyers. So, Manny, show us. Uh, this is the semi-automatic right here. I'm going to switch with you. And I'm going to show this off right quick. Awesome, awesome. We got a uh, $100 scope on it, a uh, Bushner banner. Picked this up at Wally World. Uh, it's okay. Like I said, it does, it does have the uh, little, little zoom wheel right here. It does have that, which is nice. But it does not have a parallax. Um, and, you know, I think this, this is good for maybe up to maybe 50 yards, 100 yards. But um, we're going to go ahead and test the zero. And like, like Manny said, this, this is the safety here. And it's semi-auto, so we don't have to keep loading it. But um, I'm going to show you guys how it, you know, how it goes. We're going to go ahead and see. We're going we're gonna to be hitting those targets down there. I'll let you, I'll let you uh, zoom in on the targets. I'm going for the metal target. But... Okay, so that was good right there. That's 12 shots. As you can see, I hit about half of them at least. Um, rifle is good. It, it, it does need to be zeroed in a little bit more. For uh, The further we zero this in, the more accurate it will be at closer range. So as you can see, uh, what happened right here, I believe when uh, last time we brought CJ out to the field, it accidentally fell out of his golf cart, and it kind of uh, scratched it right there. It kind of threw it off. And I was able to adjust it quickly in the field, as you guys can see but not quite as accurate as I would want it to be. Now, for me to really zero this rifle in and get it accurate, I would put it on my tripod gun stand, screw it in, and I would put our target pretty far, probably at least 50 to 100, you know, 50, 60 yards. And then what I would do is you see the scope, I would zoom it all the way in, all the way in, so I can see the, the target like with it so magnified. And then that's when I'll try to shoot at the targets and then try to make my adjustments and now the benefit of zeroing it in when you have it all the way zoomed in is uh, when you zoom it out, guess what? It's still accurate because we zeroed it all the way zoomed in. 
like like really dialed in. So now when I put it back at three, it's it. The theory is is it should still be pretty accurate. Now if we were to zero it at three, right, and then zoom it, take it, try to take a zoomed in shot at at uh, nine, there's a chance that the point of impact can definitely be off. So that's why I recommend you do it like that. This is the Benjamin Marauder semi-auto pros cons let me know what you guys think about this um the panthera i would rate that probably like a, a eight out of ten manny what would you rate the panthera that's about the same eight out of ten okay this right here i would rate it probably about probably about a like probably like a seven or eight out of ten as well manny i'm gonna rest this down we're gonna switch and you're gonna show off the panther i'm sorry the the marauder semi-automatics little brother Oh, this thing right here super useful where you know you got that so wait hold on before we even talk about any of that stuff you were using this most out of everybody what were you using this personally when you were out in the field for just finish the job you know they're so using it as a finisher yeah so you know you you probably won't be able to hit a far target but if you're up close you could definitely you know well here's what Let's, let's take a look at the optic on it real quick. What do we have on there? We have a, what is a, a crossman? All right, yeah. Okay. Well, guys, we actually got this scope off a little Red Rider pump BB gun, all right? And the only reason we did that is because, let's look at the rail for a second. Let me show off the rail, Manny. The rail right here oh. is where the scope is mounted on. Let's take a look at it. So that is not your typical rail on big rifles, guys. This right here is called a dovetail rail. And at the moment, we only had, I think that's a dovetail. I don't know what that is actually, but that, you see how this mount was able to fit on that? Right. Compared to the Marauder, it's got a Picatinny rail and that scope fits on that. So that's the only reason why we have that scope on there. That is not, that is a scope, but that is like a level one scope. That's a level one scope, right? This right here is probably like a level, maybe like a level three or four scope, right? So, um, we're going to be changing the scopes on it because we do have an extension. But Manny, you know, um, if you can, show us how this thing operates, man. All right. You got your safety on the side. Then you got your bolt action. You aim to your target. I heard impact. Yeah. What'd you hit? Uh, I went for the paper target. Actually. For real? You hit? Okay. Yeah. Oh, dude, you hit. Uh, the Panthera hit right above it. You hit right below it. Okay. Uh, you got a couple rounds in there. Go ahead, man. Let's see. Dang. Thing got some power to it, huh? It, honestly, it really do. And it's so smooth, too. So you're, I see you're drilling the left side of the box, which is all right. But at least, you know. Oh, it is. You got to close it, man. Oh, is it, is it out? out? It's, it's out? out. Okay, yeah. it's out. All right. All right, she's out. She is out. Oh, damn. Okay, there you guys have it right there. That's the selection from Benjamin that we have. The Marauder family, semi-automatic, and the Mini. In the future, what we will do is we are going to add the extension uh, scope, uh, the stock on the back. And then also we are going to change the scope because I just got this new extension uh, adapter that we can put this on here. We can put any scope we want. We can put an element. Uh, we can put a digital scope. Um, we can put a, you know, a, a Bushnell on it. Um, different scopes that we can put on it now. And then we can really test this tool, see how it is. It's pretty Okay, this is one of the other tools that we have in the arsenal. And this is a actual foreign air rifle that we got. I personally got this from a GIF. Shout out to my friend Bub. As you guys can see, laser engraved iguana with the flag. It's got this nice wood stock right here. This type of style is called a bullpup. It's where it's actually more small, compact, and uh, not long, so it's perfect for you know um, working in tight corners. 
as you can see, it's got an engraving right there. The one and only, the iguana man. You know, he said he had a, a, a gift for me. So when I saw it, I was really cool, really happy. It was really cool. This is the brand right here called Koozie. It's from Turkey. It's the K100 or K300. I'm sorry about that. And it's a 25 caliber. And it is equipped with a, I believe this is a Hatson or a center point scope. This one is not moderated. I don't know if we can put one on there. We possibly can. So this one has a lot more bark, but this is a powerhouse of a rifle. And what I've noticed, it, um, the pros is obviously it's got some power. We got to spend some more time working on the scope, dialing it in. But we're going to go ahead and see where she's hitting at right now. The safety is right here uh, on the trigger, which to me is a little, a little questionable. And the loading mechanism is right here underneath, which is different. So I'm going to go for the, those steel targets, that, that steel tree, and see where this thing's hitting at. Oh my God, it's cutting right over it. Whew. It is, I don't know if you guys see it, where it's hitting at, but it is floating right over that little target that I'm aiming for. So it's right there. Just got to spend some time and uh, to get it super dialed in. My goodness. Bro, it is hitting everything besides the target. It is going right above it. It is right underneath it. It's not hitting it though. Finally. And we're out. So <laughs> as you guys can see, we do definitely need to work on this. It will probably take me about 20 to 30 minutes to have it fully dialed in, ready for some iguana hunting. But this is another piece that we have, guys, the Koozie K300 uh, Bullpup PCP air rifle. Um, like I said, it, it's it's a good rifle. I, I, I like it. It feels good grabbing it. It has a cool way to load it. Uh, stay tuned, guys. Manny's going to show you guys uh, basically one of the quintessential tools that we use as far as air rifles for iguana hunting. So stay tuned for that. This right here, this is a Gamo uh, break barrel. I think it's a Swarm air rifle. And the cool thing with this is uh, this technology was actually developed in Spain and it uses a gas piston inside. You gotta charge it though, which requires a decent amount of strength. What I like to do is uh, you know, stand in a nice stance, grab the rifle right over here, stick that on my hip, and I'm gonna use my hand in, in a one swift motion, crack it down like that. You know, you're going to find like whatever spot works for you the best. Um, sometimes it might take a little, you know, a little bit of time to crack it. But over time, you should be able to develop, you know, enough strength to, uh, to crack it down pretty easily. Now, you guys are probably wondering, like, why would you want to shoot this when you got all these other rifles right here that are high powered? Well, the reality of it, guys, a lot of the uh, removal that we do is in residential areas. And there could be uh, a house. There could be you know, uh, something, a building behind, a, a AC unit, something, I have no idea, a lot of different stuff. So that's where a low powered air rifle comes in handy because you have a less chance of ricochet or pass throughs, all right? Um, this right here is hitting about maybe uh, 18, 19 FPE, that's foot pound of energy. These other rifles right here, this one is like probably at like 25, 25, the FXs are, that's at 30, maybe 32. The M3 is probably at 40, I believe, at 22. So the M3 is actually double the power of this. But, um, you know, it's still this is still strong enough to kill an iguana or to, you know, even a big one. But uh, we use this, like I said, areas that we can't shoot those rifles. Also, as, as crazy as it sounds, is you need the rifle, you need the magazine, a sling helps. But then also you just need a thing of pellets. That's it. Once you have the pellets and the rifle and you don't jam it, you can be hunting all day without any external air tanks or uh, compressors of anything of that sort. We do have a target down range. These targets guys are mad old. We're going to actually set up another, uh, little field right around here. If you want cameraman, I'll let you get a second to come over here. It's okay. So I'm going to show you guys a couple, a little shooting demonstration. I'm going to be aiming at that metal, uh, 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 target tree.
I just I just love that sound that it makes. And you, and you it's like you're kissing it with the pellet right there. And these pellets, guys, believe it or not, for a brake barrel, it's still going about 800 FP, uh, S, feet per second. So it's still pretty decent. Um, and they come, these, believe it or not, guys, they do come at a great price. There's pros and cons to it. If you're a real hunter, it, it, all, it all depends on how you use your tool, how you develop and how you, uh, you know, get those skills and experience with the tool. The tool it, uh, essentially becomes an extension of yourself. All right. So that's why I'm very comfortable with this gamble because this is the first one I was shooting. A little high. A lot of people like Iguana Man, like, what does it take to be a good shooter? Guys, it's about steadiness. It's about your breathing technique. And it's about being, being able to control your fatigue, right? If you're, if you're tired, you're shaking. Uh, you remember, guys, you got to keep that crosshair on there. And the most important thing is right as you're pulling the trigger on your target, while you're hunting, guys, is that's where you want to be as still as possible. Because you can have it right there, and then when you... Then you can pull, you know, pull the, the trigger, jerk the rifle. That shot is now, you know, basically going down, going low, going right over its shoulder. So it's just working like that. Manny, there's five shots in here. You want to take a couple? Oh, yeah. All awesome. right, clear clear that out. And let's, uh, you know, get a little practice in. It's always good to get some practice in. Right, Manny? Oh, yeah. one okay are, are you aiming for the red dot manny mm, or just for the yeah, target just, just for the target real quick oh, okay yeah. okay let's go check it out man nice so that was just a quick accusation of the target the whole circle was the target obviously if you wanted to shoot that red dot it would take you you know you wouldn't be able to just be pulling the trigger that quick but that's the nice little group that manny was able to make nice job manny thanks Nice job. Nice little group on the bottom right there. Um, <laughs> guys, this target right here is done. Look at that. It is mangled. It is warped. It has been used and abused. So we're going to get a new target tree right there. Um, these rifles even hitting this box. Let's see if it's going through. Let's see. Can we... Is this box open? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. This is going definitely going through. 100%. See, there's some pellets lodged up in there. Okay, guys, we do have one more rifle to show you guys, and we saved the best for last, so stay tuned. Okay, so this is it right here, guys. This is the final rifle we're going to be showing you guys. This is the FX Impact Mark III, or known as the M3 by FX Air Guns. This rifle right here, guys, is by far... Uh, one of my personal favorite tools that I like to use doing iguana removal. I can do so much with this and save a lot of time and be super accurate, efficient. And I'm just confident if I pull up to a job and there's a huge infestation, this magazine is holding 28 rounds, guys. 28 rounds. Everything is bolt action. But the, the, the benefit of that, guys, is it's really, really accurate. Um, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure where it's hitting at right now. We're about to find out. Matter of fact, I do have some uh, of my adjustments saved in my phone. Uh, if you guys can bear with me, I'm going to just go ahead and check that to make sure it is actually zeroed to what I last uh, remember, you know? All right, let's see where it's at. You ready? Oh, yeah. All right, we'll go behind you. Yeah, we're going to test the impact. I, it's, I don't even know where it's hitting at, so good thing we're here right now. That was an impact. Yeah. That was a hit. Okay. Did you hear that? Oh, yeah, dude. Right on the money. All right. All right. I 
I think that's all we had to really see. Let's see if that thing was hitting. And that, guys, is why this right here is my favorite tool that I like to use, FX Impact Mark III, aka the M3. It's equipped with this Element Nexus scope, which, you know, like all these little different turrets on here make this scope super adjustable, uh, super easy to, uh, you know, shoot different distances. And uh, I don't know if you can see through it, man. I'm going to hold this gun, just show them right through this. And that's it. It is equipped, like I said, Donnie FL uh, moderator, carbon fiber custom shot to Izzy from the Donnie FL gang. And then obviously, guys, the uh, Mark III, the, the M3 from FX Air Guns, which, <laughs> like I said, um, is a nice rifle, guys. This one goes about, uh, about $2,000 for this rifle, but it is worth every single cent, especially if you do the type of stuff that I'd be doing or if you're a, a real big enthusiast because you can customize this and uh, you just get everything you get all the bells and whistles guys it's you see it's a moderated rifle it's got these different plenums and different gauges but that right there guys is what creates such an accurate shooting so guys this is the other this is the first round we do have some other rifles in storage me and man you're going to take some time we got this ballastol right here we're going to go ahead and wipe down the rifles get all the crust and the crud and the and the uh, rust off of them as you guys can see they have been used and abused and uh, right now we're going to service them we just tested where they're all hitting at i'm happy for everything uh these rifles on the day before we're going to hunt i will spend 30 minutes put them on the tripod turret get them super dialed in so there will not even be a single question when I'm going to be doing iguana removal with them. Guys, thanks for checking out the Lifestyle channel. And I hope you guys enjoyed this little behind the scenes. It's your friend Roger the Iguana Man. And we're with your boy Manny. We're with Manny. We're back with Manny. We're going to be back at it again with the gang. We're going to be meeting up CJ and Hooper here in a little bit. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. For all those that are wondering, like I said, we do got some more rifles. As you guys can see, we got an FX Streamline right here. Manny, don't be afraid to use some more Ballastol too, man. Get that in there. This is good stuff right here. It's safe to use on air rifles as well. Just make sure okay. you put that. Yeah, just get that on there because it's not gonna it's not gonna harm anything. It's safe to use on seals. See, Manny just wiped on all these rifles, and you see how that Ballastol took off all that rust. We got a little bit of rust inside those screws. I'm gonna go ahead get a little Q-tip, be able to soak that in for a little bit. Um, but Everything is looking good, guys. Looking good, looking great. Out of all the rifles that you guys seen us use, what is your favorite? Drop a comment, let me know. We do have some more rifles as well. This is a Gamo uh, Maxim. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, this is the, actually the Magnum. I'm so sorry about that, guys. So this right here is pushing about 25 FPE, which is about maybe maybe 20% more than the 18 FPE, or 30% more actually, from the standard gamo. Uh, so that right here is a powerhouse as well, but once again, it's manual cocking effort needed to actually load the rifle itself. And then, you know, but like I said, you don't need air. This is the Benjamin um, uh, Kratos, I believe. Yep, Kratos. And this is one of my first rigs right here. As you guys can see, we do have a, a uh, digital scope on it from ATN, which is really, really nice. We're gonna bring this one out in the field once again. It is super duper heavy. You definitely need two hands to grab that. And that is a full-size beast of an air rifle with a state-of-the-art rifle scope that has night vision on it and uh, video recording capabilities. So Manny, that's the dream line. We're gonna get that back in the arsenal as well. We're gonna get all these rifles guys back, ready to rock and roll. And we will see you guys out in the field. All right, this is the Lifestyle Channel. Guys, please subscribe if you are new because you will see a lot of behind the scenes stuff and a lot of other goodies that you will never see on the Iguana Man Iguana Hunting Channel. So hope you guys enjoyed, we'll see you guys.